What's up everybody? I'm just sitting here with Dean. We're outside. Dean! Hi babe! Hey! So I have my camera propped up on this pillow, so I hope it doesn't fall. I thought it'd be a good idea to go back to that one post that that I had um, a little while ago. I asked, what do you guys struggle with the most when it comes to dieting or tracking macros? So one person said, for me, it's typically guesstimating macros. When I go out to eat, you never really know for sure. That's an awesome question. So when I go out to eat, um, I usually leave a bunch of calories open. So I'll track normally throughout the day, probably eat lower carb, lower fats, definitely get my protein in, high protein, low carb, low fats the whole day. And then for dinner or lunch or wherever, whenever I'm going out to eat, I leave calories open. So like the other day, just for example, I went out to eat and I usually eat around, let's say 3000 calories. So I would eat 1,500 calories that day, and then I left 1,500 calories open to eat at dinner, to have whatever I wanted for dinner, dessert, it doesn't matter. So I had 1,500 calories to kind of play around with, if that makes sense. So of those 1,500 calories that you have left over, you can either track closely. Say you're, you're eating a burger. You can um, go on MyFitnessPal or whatever app you're using to track, and either find something that's closely related. So I know Applebee's, Chili's, like a lot of restaurants like that have their uh, nutrition in apps like MyFitnessPal. So you can track something closely like that. So if you had a cheeseburger, just go to MyFitnessPal and track Applebee's cheeseburger. And yeah, it's not gonna be exact, but it'll be close enough. Or you can do it by each individual ingredient. So you can track the bun. Say it's on a brioche bun, you can track the brioche bun. Say in the menu it says it's an eight ounce burger. You can go and track cooked eight ounce burger. You can track the cheese. You can tr track the ingredients that you have on it. So that's gonna give you a more exact guesstimate if you track things individually like that. Or if you don't wanna track at all, like I said, just leave the 1500 calories open and just guesstimate 1500 calories. So next question is, I have a hard time calculating my total daily expenditure. So total daily expenditure, TDEE, that is your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, plus whatever calories you burn for exercise. So your BMR is how many calories you burn just at rest. Like if you were to do nothing all day, that's how many calories your body would burn. Your TDEE is that plus whatever exercise you're doing. So an easy way to figure out um, your BMR is there's a bunch of calculators. You can literally Google BMR calculator and it'll calculate it for you. Or what I think is best, track what you're eating. Five to seven days, I would say. Track what you're eating. Everything you eat, everything that has calories, whether it's a condiment, a drink, a food, obviously. Write it down or put it in an app. Calculate how many calories you're eating for the week. And then if you lose weight, you know you're eating below your BMR. If you gain weight, you know you're eating above your BMR. And then if you stay the same weight, you know that you're eating around your maintenance calories. Now you can also track your exercise with that. It's hard to calculate how many calories you're exactly burning. You can either buy like a heart rate monitor. Um, I have like a lo little polar watch. I haven't used it in a while, but it tells you um, how many calories you burn during that session. It's really windy, sorry. <laughs> or you can just again go on my friend and it'll calculate it for you. So you can add that to your calories that you're eating throughout the week, your BMR, and then you can know your total daily energy expenditure. And you then from there, you can know whether you need to burn more calories, um, increase your energy expenditure, if you're not losing weight, or if your goal is to gain more weight, you know that you need to eat more. So <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm not making any sense at all, but I hope that makes sense. So the next question is, I have struggled with binging in the past when I got too hungry and I was out of macros. So that's a really common problem. I used to struggle with this problem as well. Your macros are super low, say you're on a cut, you're trying to lose some weight, you're basically on poverty macros. Um, say you're only eating like 150 grams of carbs a day and your protein's super high, your fats are super high, hopefully if your carbs are that low. Say you run out of carbs and you haven't even eaten dinner yet. And then for dinner, you're like, all right, well, I need to eat like chicken and green beans and no carbs. That, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't recommend that 
unless you're a specific athlete, unless you have a meal plan from a nutritionist customized specifically for you, um, or if you're like training for a bikini competition or some figure competition, that's when I think you should have your macros that low because honestly, you need 130 grams of carbs just for your brain function. You need 130 grams. So if you're eating around 150, or even lower than 130, that's super dangerous and you can't keep that up for a super long time. Unless you have the willpower of like fucking Gandhi, you're gonna binge. <laughs> I would recommend um, taking what's called a diet break. Um, actually, there's a lot of research that uh, supports diet breaks. So say you're in a calorie deficit for a few weeks and your weight loss plateaus or you're eating super low carbs, or your macros are super low, you can go on a diet break, which is basically bumping your calories back up to maintenance. So for two weeks, you're eating at maintenance calories, say that's like 300 grams of carbs. So you eat that every day for two weeks, and then after those two weeks, you go back down to your cutting calories. It's kinda like carb cycling almost, but carb cycling, you do it like every three days. This is like every two weeks, you give your body a break. And it's actually proven that that helps with fat loss in the long term. Next question, occasional binging, talked about that. The hardest part is getting started, but I assume like with anything, it gets easier with time and becomes more natural. That's not really a question, but that's something I want to comment on. If you are already at super low calories, super low macros, and you start a cut, it's going to be horrible because you have nothing really to cut from. You have nothing really to start your cut. So what I would recommend is before you start cutting, look at where your calories are because you want them to be at a high enough point where you can start cutting and losing weight and basically not having to starve yourself to lose weight. I recommend actually increasing your calories slowly through a reverse diet until you get to a point where you're maintaining or even gaining a little bit of weight, where you're putting yourself into a bulk almost, um, and then start cutting. Because once you start feeding your body more, like what it actually needs, you'll actually see the results that you want. If there's a person I feel like Dean's about to start barking. <laughs> so next question is, for me, it is a battle to keep sufficient calories going in during a growth period without letting the extra calories spill over into periods of less intense lifting. I don't know about y'all, but after four to six weeks of nailing the lifts heavy, I have to deload for a couple of weeks or so to keep my body intact. Not quite sure <laughs> what that one's asking. If that's your question, uh, DM me and explain a little bit more and I'll try to answer that in the next video. Cause I'm not, I don't quite get that question. I just can't seem to eat enough protein without adding up the carbs. It's like I end up eating way more carbs than I'm supposed to, even with the healthy food. That's another super common problem. What I would suggest is you can either do it through uh, one or two ways. One, um, I like to plan everything the night before, so I'll track everything tonight, what I'm gonna eat tomorrow. It just takes the guesswork out of it. I know exactly what I'm gonna eat, when I'm gonna eat, and it just works for me. So you can do that. Track your protein first. So say you're trying to hit 200 grams of protein. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, track protein, that's it, and hit 200 grams. And then go back in and fill your meals with the carbs and the fats, because if you're trying to track it meal by meal, and then say you're over on carbs by lunchtime and you're not even anywhere near close to your protein goal, it's hard to track it like that. Another thing you can do is, I like to do this. <laughs> so for example, I just bought um, cookie butter gelato from Trader Joe's and I haven't had it yet, but I plan to have it tonight. So what I do is I track first my treats that I'm gonna eat. So I'll have that in there already and the MyFitnessPal app calculates it for you. So from the gelato, I put in there first, then I went to my protein, make sure I had all my protein, and then from my leftover carbs and fats, I tracked whatever else I could eat to make it fit that number. Being hungry for sweets. <laughs> yeah, so this one um, kinda goes into what I said before. Track your sweets. If you know you're gonna go out to eat or you know you wanna eat something, you know you wanna eat some chocolate, track that first and then go back in and from your remaining calories track what you need to hit your goal. I do fine if I don't work, it stays where I work when I tend to cave. There's this article called, um, I forget what it's called, I might have to like 
put it below for you guys. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's something like how to lose weight or how to cut weight for the busy work person or that's probably not even close to what it is but it's something like that one of the main things it talked about was the sweets at work i know for some people some companies come in and bring food bring desserts bring whatever and it's hard to lose weight if there's like a birthday every week and there's donuts in the kitchen and cake in the fridge and everyone around you is celebrating and you feel left out because you don't want to eat that stuff you can one either not eat it at all and i know that takes a lot of willpower or like i've said before track it in your calories so if you want a piece of cake track that piece of cake and then you kind of have to play around with your macros and see what you need to get rid of maybe for that day to fit the cake in maybe you need to add a little bit of protein because you got rid of a whole meal just to have that piece of cake so it really just depends on what your macros are and how you can make it fit also you can bring meals when i go to work i bring meals every day i will literally bring like four meals into my eight hour shift <laughs> and i work at a restaurant part time so i mean i especially know how it feels because we have dessert features every night we have dinner features every night and the desserts are so fucking good there was this one night where the dessert feature was like a cookie butter candy bar i literally bring my meals into work and i keep them in a mini fridge and just eat them throughout the shift easy meals like turkey rice and a veggie like whatever it is just make sure you have a lean protein a complex carb and veggie you can bring protein bars which i do protein shakes i do that too sometimes fruit yogurt almonds or nuts any type of nuts that you like and another tip is water a lot of people go into work and forget to drink their water so either set a reminder on your phone sometimes i have to do this like every hour set a reminder where your uh, something will pop on, up on your phone and it'll say drink water and you need to remind yourself to continuously drink water because a lot of people feel like they're hungry when really they're just dehydrated <laughs> last one end of the day cravings so i guess this is like a good one to end on because it ties into everything so to stop your cravings you need to um, eat enough so if your calories are already low if your macros are already low and you're trying to cut from there i mean there's there's no way you're gonna have cravings so i would recommend maybe increasing bumping up your calories a little bit for a couple weeks or like i said before go into a little reverse diet that'll help with the cravings if you're really craving something or you really want something make it fit your macros or plan it track it first and then uh track your other meals after that water will help with cravings a lot of people crave food just because they're dehydrated i try to drink over a gallon a day um gallon is like my minimum Another thing is people sometimes don't eat during the day either. So I remember when I was in school, um, especially high school, I would go to school, barely eat breakfast, um, have a shitty lunch, and then by last period, I'm thinking about the food that's in my kitchen. I'm thinking about going back to my parents' house like, oh my God, I know there's some Hot Pockets in there. I know my dad probably bought a pie. I know there's some ice cream. And I'm literally thinking while I'm in school about all the food I'm gonna pick out on when I get home. And I'm sure that's the same for y'all. Like when you go to work um, and you don't eat anything, you don't eat all day, you don't bring meals, you think it's healthy because you're not eating, but then you get home and you eat everything in the fucking kitchen. So I've been there, I know how it is, and to help that is you need to eat. <laughs> So eat every three hours, continuously feed your body. And if you do that, your metabolism is continuously running, you're continuously burning fat. So those are all the questions on this one. Um, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to do another Q&A like this. Comments below if you have any other questions. This was helpful for you guys. And if you think anyone else can um, benefit from this information, definitely share the video with them. I wanna help as much of you as I can because I know how what it feels like to go through all these struggles. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be, try to post more videos, I promise. Um, my Instagram is Body by Natalie. Follow me on there, send me any questions you have. I'll make a whole nother video next week if y'all have a ton of questions. Also, if you'd like your own macro breakdown, if you need help personally, one-on-one, -on -one, DM me, let's set up a time to talk. I'll be happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one over the phone. I'll leave the application below so I can just get to know y'all a little bit, um, know your struggles and your goals. And then let's just get on the phone. Let me just talk to you and help you through uh, your struggles 
and just give you some advice. So I'll leave that application below. Uh, like this video if you found it helpful and I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye.